has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Praise His holy name. God bless you, Kingdom Choir. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is no place better to be than in the house of the Lord. There is peace in the house of the Lord. There is love in abundance in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good that you are here today because I tell you, you will never go back the same. The spirit of the living God is here and he will touch you. He will meet you at your point of need. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we invite you to come and speak unto us. Lord, we can never do without you. You are everything unto us. We want to thank you for making it possible for us to gather here once again in perfect peace and tranquility. Lord, we pray for all the brethren that are not here with us today. We want to bring before you Apostle Tri Shumbusho, and all the brethren that are not here, we pray that wherever they are this day, Father, you will continue to be with them, protect them, bless them, Lord Jesus. Those of us that are here today, we pray that you bless us with a special word. Holy Spirit divine, prepare our hearts to be receptive to your word today. Father, renew our minds that your word will find place in our minds and by your grace we will seek Lord to obey your word to do your word that father your word will have an impact on our lives and through us it will touch others that they may know that only you are God Jehovah thank you father thank you son thank you Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name we pray amen I have noticed something, but suddenly I find it creeping into the church today. And this is the culture of begging. You know, people try to take advantage of the generosity of the children of God. And they come up with all sorts of stories to demand financial assistance from people that they think are better off. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalm 37, verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. And here David says, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. The Lord has not stopped taking care of his children. The Lord is still taking care of his children. How many times have you recited Psalm 23? Do you no longer believe in the words in Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not do what? 
want. I shall not lack. I shall never be in need. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I suppose most of you know it by heart. Or you no longer believe in the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. And verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Those who do not want me to eat, those who want me to die of hunger, while they are around, you prepare a table. And when it's a table, there is entree, there is nyamachoma, there is Nyama chicken, there is whatever you can call. And after all, there is cake and ice cream for some of us. Because the Lord is your shepherd. He provides for you. So why do we go on begging? If you are still the sheep of Jesus Christ, then stop begging. If Jesus Christ is your shepherd, stop relying on man and focus on Jesus. The prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer, and all of us know it by heart, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So why are you seeking your daily bread elsewhere? You no longer trust in God? Then why are you in church? The word of God is the truth. He is the great provider, Jehovah Jireh. He never changes. Let us go to the book of John, chapter 5. St. John, chapter 5. And Bishop, if you will, could you read the first nine verses for us? John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man who was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Amen. God bless you. 
There was a pool in Jerusalem in a place called Bethesda. And this pool, once in a while, an angel of the Lord comes to stir up the pool. He comes to take a swim. And after that, the first person to drop inside that water, whatever sickness he has, disappears. He gets healed. So people go around and wait for the angel to come. And here is a man, paralyzed, who has been sick for 38 years. He's been staying at the pool, but he has not been able to get inside first. So this man was sick. One day Jesus walks by. He sees this man, and he asks him a question. Do you want to be healed? A very straightforward question, a very direct question. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to get well? Then the man replies, but. But what? The question is, do you want to get well? But. But I have no man. Do you want to get well? Do you want money? But. Do you want a job? But. But what? I have no man. This man had been sick for a long time. For 38 years, he has been waiting for healing. Now someone comes, Jesus comes, and he says, do you want to get well? I would have jumped, yes! I want to get well. When I was coming here, my neck was almost stiff. I could barely turn. But you see, hallelujah, because I want to get well. My throat was paining me. I could barely talk. But I knew <laughs> that when I come here, the healer is here waiting for me. I'm not going to say, but, no, 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 no. Yes, I want to get well. Yes, I want a good job. Yes, I want a new car. Yes. But the man said, but I have no man. You see, this man's problem was that he was looking for a man. In fact, what he was telling Jesus Christ is that, yes, I want to be healed, but I can't. I am too slow. I have been here too long. I don't have friends. No one will help me. So I cannot be healed. Whenever the pool was disturbed, there are people who have legs to run. They were blind people. Maybe somebody has one arm, but their legs are there. They can run. They will get there before him. And therefore, he could not get there. So was he expecting Jesus to sit with him? And when the angel comes, Jesus will carry him and throw him into the water? He was looking up to man. This morning, the Lord has sent me to tell you not to look up to any man. Do not rely on man. Do not put your trust in man. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Brethren, when you put your trust in man, you will be disappointed. I know there are people, in fact Christians, who go to specific pastors, so-called healing pastors, for healing. But let me tell you, no man can heal anyone. 
no matter the anointing over any person, he cannot heal you. No man is a healer. Only Jesus Christ is a healer. Therefore, trust Jesus for your healing. Jesus is all you need in every situation. Every human being can and will fail you at one time or the other. But Jesus Christ will never fail you. Hallelujah. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. The people of this world, they promise and they fail. But Jesus never fails. He has promised he will never fail. I will lean on him. I will lean on him. He has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness is forevermore. Do you want to be healed? This question looks ridiculous. Indeed, why do you think the man was lying there for 38 years? And you come and ask him, do you want to be healed? But you see, Jesus Christ asked a very important question. This man had been sick for so long that he had grown used to his condition. He had come to accept the state in which he was as normal. And where he was staying, he had been surrounded by people who are also sick and everybody. So in that circumstance, they felt their condition was normal. Are you in a state where you are accepting your condition as being normal? Have you gotten to the state where you are living with a disease that you think is normal? If everyone in Arusha is a drunkard, does it mean you should be one of them because you think it's normal? If everyone is taking two, three wives, they call it what? This secondary home, what do they call it? Nyumba something. Nyumba dog something. Something dogo. Because you see everybody doing it, so you accept it to be normal? You see, the numerous worshippers that came to Jerusalem, when they passed by that area, they gave the people arms. And therefore, they got money to eat. And therefore, they had become perpetual beggars. And they thought it was normal. They had been turned into professional beggars. They had become used to being sick and begging for arms. Jesus' question was a wake-up call. A lot of able-bodied men and women in the world today have become perpetual beggars. And in fact, some in churches, and including this church, are behaving the same way. People have accepted their circumstances as being normal. They have settled into less satisfactory situations, which is contrary to the life of a Christian. The man at the pool needed a renewal of mind. He needed a change of attitude. 
If you are like him, then renew your mind. I say renew your mind. Renew your mind with the word of God. Stop depending on man. Stop begging for handouts. Stop begging for leftovers. You are a child of glorious Jesus and you deserve better. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh, Lord, do something new in this place. Something new in this place. Something new in this place. Oh, Lord. The Holy Spirit will do something new today in your lives. He will renew your minds. You will have a change of attitude. You have a special understanding. And you will not stay where you are. You will not continue to accept mediocrity. You are kings. You are to exercise dominion over the world and everything that is in it. My brothers and sisters, begging will never take you out of poverty. Go to the source of your help. Go to the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Your help does not come from a human being. It comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This man at the pool, his problem has become his way of life. No one had ever helped him. He had no hope of being cured. His situation looked hopeless until, until, until Jesus came to him. His situation was what? Hopeless until Jesus came to him. No matter how hopeless your situation is today, no matter what condition you think you are in today, I am here to tell you that Jesus will come to you. Jesus will not pass you by. Jesus will stand still. Just as blind Bartimaeus shouted and Jesus was on his way to Jericho, but he stopped. Jesus stopped. And he said, come. And they said, the master calls you. Bartimaeus took off his jacket, the clothing that identified him with blindness. He threw it away. His white cane, he threw it away and he moved towards the Lord. He could not see, but he heard the voice. He knew the direction of the voice and he responded. And today you will respond. You will cry and the Lord will answer your call. Trust is based on the fact that someone will fulfill a promise. On how many occasions have you made a promise to a dear one? By saying, I will always love you. For better, for worse. Huh? Yeah? How many divorce cases have we seen? I will never lie to you. I will protect you with my life. 
You see, most people, when they make these promises, they have every intention of fulfilling them. But the problem is that they do not have absolute control over future events. Man is limited. We make promises based on our current situation. And therefore, when our situation changes, we are not in a position to fulfill the promises. So what happens? We fail. We break the promise. And that is why Psalm 118 verse 8 tells us, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. This is because God, unlike man, fulfills all his promises. By his nature, God cannot lie. When God makes a promise, it is done. Amen? God is the only person who has the ability to fulfill all, not some, of his promises. When God says something, it is done. In Psalm 55 verse 11, God says, So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty. It will not come back void. But it will accomplish what I desire. It will accomplish what pleases me. And it will achieve the purpose for which I spoke it. So whatever promise God has made to you, it shall come to pass. The moment God speaks it, it is done. It's a matter of time for it to manifest in the physical. But man cannot always fulfill his promises because he is not in absolute control of his circumstances. God never changes. And so is his word and his promise. To receive God's promises, all we have to do is put our trust in God. Above all persons and all things. Can you trust God today? Hello? Can you trust God with your sickness? Can you trust God with your problems? Can you trust God with the job that you are looking for? Can you trust God with the husband that you are seeking? Can you trust God with your marriage? Can you trust God? Can you trust God? Can you trust God? That is all you need to do. Let us read the book of Mark chapter 14. Mark 14, 27 to 31. Mark 14, 27 and 31. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke more vehemently, 
if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. Amen. And they all said likewise. <laughs> they will not deny Jesus. But we know what happened. Peter and all the apostles boasted to Jesus Christ. Even if all fall away, I will not. But Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today. Tonight. <laughs> not tomorrow. Not the day after. Today, 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 where we are here. This very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me not once, not twice, three times. Peter said, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even if I have to die, I will die rather than deny you. And all the other disciples, not only Peter, they agreed with him. They said the same thing. But what happened later in the night? When Jesus asked them, pray with me, my heart is troubled. He went aside to pray. When he came, they were sleeping. They did not pray with him. They let him down. When he was arrested, all of them, like we say in West Africa, scatter. They scattered. They ran away. Later, Peter gathered some courage. So he sneaked to the high priest residence to come and see what was going on. And people noticed that mm, your accent, you must be from Galilee. No, 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 I'm not from Galilee. No, you are with Jesus. You are one of them. I don't know that man. Three times. And then he had Kokroko. Oh. He turned away and wept. Why? He had disappointed Jesus. And these are disciples who for three years were with Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was moving. They went and made miracles. They let Jesus down. Do not put your trust in man. If the disciples that were with Jesus, let Jesus Christ down. Not an ordinary person. What about you? Do not put your trust in man. Put your trust in the one who never changes. Put your trust in the great I am. Put your trust in the eternal rock of ages. The rock that does not shake. When all things that can be shaken are shaken, the rock will continue to stay. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, who are you looking for in the house of God today? Are you here because you believe you will meet someone who will give you some money? Or who in some way will help you to change your situation? Or you are here to meet Jesus Christ? Who are you relying upon for your provision? Who are you looking for for your healing? Who are you trusting for a breakthrough in your life, in your circumstance? Man or God? I tell you, Stop depending on man and start focusing and trusting in Jesus Christ. He has promised and he will never fail. The word of God in Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Shall men give Unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you give, with her it shall be measured unto you. So, if you want to receive, Jesus is telling you, start giving. As you give, he will give unto you. But if your aim is to be receiving, then know he is not going to give to you. 
you only receive from God, not from man. Do not rely on man. In Isaiah 59, 1, the word of God says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. When you cry, he hears you and he will answer you. Cry unto him and he will answer you. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. Jehovah Rapha is your healer. Jehovah Shalom is your peace. Jehovah Nisi is your banner of victory. Mighty El Shaddai is your all-sufficient God. Ebenezer, who has brought you this far, will take you through to the end. Rely on him. Rely on him. Rely on him. Trust in the Son of the living God. And he who has promised to be with you always will never let you down. Man will let you down. Your father will let you down. Your wife will let you down. Your brother will let you down. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, will never let you down. He will answer you when you call upon him. Rise up and let us pray.